Hello, hello. Welcome to section 1.4, account model versus UTXOs. This will be fun. We're going to talk about UTXOs, which is another way for us to structure our application. So first, a little review of the account model. We have our genesis state and our state transition function, and we have our transactions, and we take those transactions, apply them to our state transition function, and you know, give our genesis state, and check the signature, and nonce, and apply our transaction, and we get a new state. Um, and our state has a address and a balance and a nonce, just like we went over. But this is only one way to structure your application. There are many, many others. And so one other way is the UTXO model, which is unspent transaction output. And that was popularized with Bitcoin, which is a lot of the reason why we're talking about it. So the uh, general format is the same, of course. Once again, we have our state and our state transition function. And we can represent anything with that, so why not represent UTXOs in this way? So we have our apply transaction function, and we're going to look at what, what, what is the kind of difference. So how, how are these transactions structured? First, we have a uh, list of inputs and a list of outputs and a list of input signatures. So we can just check. We got this, you know, here's the inputs. It's just some IDs. We have our outputs. These are the kind of transaction outputs that are in the name UTXO. And they have an owner and a value. And we have a bunch of signatures which correspond to these inputs. So great. Now, this is the general format of these UTXOs is it you know, takes in one set and it outputs another set. And so we can actually look at the an, an implementation of this online. I have a, have a code pen, so you can, you can take a look. But now let's look at it visually. So we have Alice. Alice has her state. She's got basically a list of outputs and an is spent bit field. And this list of outputs uh, has, you know, she has the, the value of 100 and she's the owner of this one. And is it spent? Well, zero means unspent and one means spent. So we just look at the index and we see, okay, do these indices match up? And we can check if it's spent or unspent. So in this case, it is unspent. But now that we flipped it to one, we can say that this uh, uh, UTXO is spent. So how does this work? Well, we have our function and that is being run by our centralized payment processor and we have Aparna and Jing and they're hanging out and well Alice has a hundred dollars and she wants to send 49 to Aparna and 49 to Jing so what does she do well she generates this transaction and this transaction lists an input and that input is our zeroth index of our uh, list of you know transaction outputs or it you know could be the hash of our transaction um, right now we're using you know the index to reference it but you know of course you can use the hash so we it also specifies a list of new transaction outputs this time with you know 49 to each to Jing and to Aparna and then two to herself and then it has a signature with Alice's signature on it so what do we do? Well, we put it into our apply transaction function. First, we check all the signatures. We look up the output and we see, okay, does the owner match the signature? Yes, it does. It matches Alice. So, check mark. Now we check all the inputs are unspent. So, we check once again the index and zero is means unspent. So, success. Now we check the input equals the output value. So, 149 plus 49 plus 2 if I do my math correctly then it's a hundred and so that works and then we set the input to spent so boom now the the that UTXO is spent and so it's not no longer a UTXO it's just a TXO and we then save our new unspent outputs and so boom we put them in our state object and we're done so now we have you know return our new state so if we wanted to look up the balances for each one of our users, what we'll do is we'll just iterate through all these uh, TXOs and we'll say, okay, um, which one is spent? Up oh, here we go. We have a, you know, the owner corresponds to Alice and it's two. So Alice has two. Then we do the same thing for Aparna and we keep looking up oh, that one. She owns that one and the other one she doesn't own. So we do the same thing for Jing, 49 
and we're good. So now Jing and Aparna have this great idea. They're going to donate their money to Jer Build a Better Future Foundation. And so what do they do? Well, they say, I want to do it, but only if you do. And Jing says, oh, I'll do it, but only if you do. So what do they do? Well, they generate a transaction, and this transaction spends both of their outputs, and it generates a new output for the Jer Build a Better Future Foundation. Well, Aparna signs this transaction, but for the transaction to be valid, all the signatures have to be there. Jing also signs the transaction, and then we just s apply it and apply our state. And we go through the same process. We check all the transaction signatures, each one of them, right? The first one corresponds to Aparna's signature, the second one corresponding to Jing's signature. Then we check that all the inputs are unspent. So we look here, they're both zero, so we're good. And then we check that the input value equals the output value. 49 plus 49 does indeed equal 98. Then we set the inputs to spent, so we update these values to one. And we then save our new UTXO, wonderful. And we return our state object. So we're set. So if we want to look up the, the the balances, we'll see that Alice still has that two. She doesn't have the, the original one that she had because that's spent, but she does have two. So we set $2. Aparna only has that one. So she already spent her UTXO. So that's zero, similar with Jing. And the Jer Build a Better Future Foundation has $98. It's a better world for all of us. <laughs> so anyway, the uh, we, now a couple couple little notes. Um, avoiding address reuse and slightly improves privacy. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, Alice, instead of just having one address, she has two addresses that she controls. She has both of those private keys. And instead of sending to her same address, we change the second UTXO to reference her second address. And so this is how we can kind of like somewhat obfuscate who you know has what money. But it doesn't work perfectly. Um, and it's probably better to use ZK snarks. And in fact, ZK snarks can actually be easier to implement if you do have a UTXO model um, for, for even more reasons, which I won't get into here. So another thing that's important to note is that low value UTXOs are called dust. So what does that mean? Well, if we're trying to spend a UTXO and the fee to spend the UTXO is more than the UTXO itself, so in this case the fee is $5 and our UTXO only, only has two, then it's called dust. And it's kind of annoying because it bloats our state and it can't actually be spent without you know someone actually like losing money. Um, so it's a kind of, you know, maybe a little bit of a tragedy of the commons type type deal. Um, so schemes are often used to like clean up dust and reduce the state size, but you know, you have to implement those yourself. So it was a little bit complicated and this is especially complicated for wallet developers and users because you have this big UTXO set, you have to like read that and then figure out what your state object is. So why might someone want to use a UTXO model? explicit dependencies. This is probably the biggest, biggest reason. Um, so what does that actually mean? Well, let's look at our transactions from before. We can represent them as these lines with dependencies. You see that this is the inputs mapping to the outputs. So we're just kind of kind of compress this and show it visually. Then we have our second transaction and we can kind of do the same thing and show it visually with the inputs mapping to the outputs. Well, let's look at another example using this kind of format. So we have transaction A uh, spending 100 and turning it into 50 and 50. Then we have transaction B turning that, you know, breaking that into half again. And then transaction C breaking that last, that other UTXO into half. So we have this transaction history A, B, and C. And then we, we can generate the, the balances by looking at, okay, here are the, uh, the spent transaction outputs and here are the unspent transaction outputs. And so we can see these are you know, our unspent outputs and these are correspond to those. So what can we do? Well, let's try flipping transaction B and transaction C and let's see what happens. No pun intended. Um, so first transaction A spends the first UTXO, then transaction C spends that UTXO and transaction B that UTXO. So if we look, we'll actually find that the, the state object is the same as before. We get the same balances at the end. So what does that really mean? That kind of means that these two transaction histories are you know, pretty much equivalent in terms of the state that they output. So it doesn't matter if you run transaction B first or you run transaction C first. 
Well, let's try this again, but this time switching A and B. So first, we're going to run transaction B. Transaction B is trying to spend a UTXO that doesn't exist yet, and so it's going to fail. And then transaction A will run, and transaction C will run. So if we try to look at the actual uh, um, output of this, we're going to see that the spent ones, these are the two UTXOs that are spent, and then we have three that are unspent. So we actually get a different state object resulting from this you know, transaction history. That is not good. So we can say that transaction history, you know, A, B, C is really just not equal to transaction uh, history B, A, C. But of course, it kind of makes sense. And why does it make sense? Well, B actually relies on transaction A having been run, right? It, B is spending a UTXO that transaction A generated. So B depends on A. And C does not actually depend on B. These two are mutually exclusive because they are spending completely separate UTXOs. And so you can see that they are going to run independently of one another. And so we're, w when we do sign a UTXO, we're really explicitly specifying what we are relying on. And this is what I mean by explicit dependencies. Now, why is this useful? Well, it's useful for parallelization. So we have transaction A and when you apply it, you get the following state. And so what we can do is we can actually split up um, our state object and we say, okay, transaction B relies on the address ABC and transaction C relies on the address 123. And so when we apply these two transactions, we get these new state objects and then we can just union these two state objects together and we get our final state object with, with all the correct balances. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means that these transactions can be applied concurrently. So in transaction B land, we can say, okay, apply transaction and we're going to supply a subsection of the full state and we'll apply the transaction and we'll do the same for transaction C. And so we don't actually need to do these you know, one after another. We can do them just simultaneously and then union the results together and so the state also can be cleanly segmented so we can you know we have these two state objects notice that they are smaller than the entire state object that their computation results in now the also there is a bit of a downside where transactions can become stale when you're when you are explicitly uh, specifying your dependencies that means that if your dependencies change your transaction can be invalidated so for instance if transaction a and transaction b are both spending the same utxo then what can happen is only one of them can go through you can't have both of them go through at the same time of course so this is a little bit trickier when you know you have two owners of the same utxo let's say alice and aparna and they both want to spend that UTXO or some portion of that UTXO. They generate transactions that conflict with one another, and we have to throw one of those transactions out. So you can get a little bit of you know uh, annoying you know transactions getting invalidated. So explicit dependencies they're pretty cool. Um, so some notes: the UTXO model can be emulated in the account model. You just you know basically don't reuse accounts, and you send all your you know your entire balance and depends on you know your implementation once again also the account model can be trivially expressed with UTXOs all you need to do is you just say okay there's a single UTXO which represents the full account state and you just spend that UTXO with each transaction and you generate the next state so this is exactly our state object from before but we're just you know kind of representing it with the UTXO uh, uh, like f frame of mind then also access lists can easily turn an account model into something that looks like UTXO so we can basically say okay each contract is a uh, UTXO and the state of that contract is just stored like the balance was stored in each UTXO from before and then we have transactions that spend those UTXOs and generate new ones and those re represent our state at the next uh, uh, step in our in our application so what does this all mean well it means that we need to be thinking about you know what tool do we use for the job we need to pick the right tool for the job so if we want explicit dependencies what we'll get is we'll get this nice co parallel computation benefit and we can potentially segment our state like we do in you know things like plasma cache for instance and at the same time we do have to be aware of the possibility of stale transactions and another thing is you know we have to be aware of the implementation details so okay well we get simplified validation where you can can validate different transactions completely separately from one another so you do get this kind of parallelization but at the same time we do get added wallet and client-side complexity and a little bit of conceptual complexity from this this whole uh, structure so 
basically there's no free lunch it's not always going to be a good fit but it's good to understand what your options are but at least there are free hugs so i hope you get one soon but next up we've got properties of centralized systems we get to list out some properties and you know boil the boil the ocean a little bit with with uh, <laughs> what these systems mean anyway until next time talk to you soon <laughs>